If you follow me on Twitch, you know that I have a gaming PC that's basically just a pile of garbage that is constantly freezing or freaking out in some way. And the only way I've found that actually fixes it is the classic one. Turn it off and then turn it on again. And it usually works. I don't know how or why, but it does. And interestingly, the same can sort of be said for the human brain. Uh, in people who have severe depression, the kind uh, of people who have exhausted all other options for treatment and are dangerously close to suicide, many of those people find relief by sort of resetting their brain. Electroconvulsive therapy, or ECT, involves a patient receiving a shock of electricity to the brain that causes a short seizure. After undergoing several of these treatments over the course of a few weeks, many patients will find that their depression is much, much more manageable. And like with my PC, doctors aren't really sure why it works, just that it does work for a lot of people. It's not like what you might have seen in horror films when it was more commonly known as electroshock treatment, uh, with a patient writhing around on the table. Uh, in fact, the patients are under general anesthesia, so from the outside, you can't even tell that anything much is happening at all. Uh, but an electroencephalogram, an EEG, will show a huge burst of activity happening in their brain. And instead of the movie trope of the patient uh, having a complete removal of their personality, a la lobotomy, uh, ECTs very often give patients back their life. They can once again socialize with friends, uh, hold down a job, and get through the world without being in a constant state of mental anguish. It's a truly life-changing intervention in the people who have the very worst depression imag imaginable. It's the only intervention left for these people, with the possible exception of ketamine, uh, which is a therapy that's still undergoing testing and is sometimes actually used in combination with ECT. All of which brings me to a surprising AMA I saw recently on Reddit. AMA stands for Ask Me Anything, and it's a way for people to learn about interesting people or often celebrities, and for those celebrities to publicize projects that they have coming up. Uh, and one of the most joyous things is when an AMA is a complete and utter disaster. And uh, that's what this is. So buckle up. This particular AMA came from a lawyer named Connor Karen, who said that he sued an ECT device manufacturer because two of his clients claim that it gave them brain damage. A judge determined that the case could go to a jury trial, at which point the manufacturers decided to settle out of court. Uh, they then updated their product information to state that some patients had reported brain damage from using the device. Karen crowed that this was a huge win as the manufacturers were finally admitting that their product could cause brain damage, uh, that their products were dangerous. And all of this surprised me, but I was very glad to see a lot of doctors, lawyers, and patients commenting on this post with really well thought out uh, fact-based criticisms. So I'm going to go over them for you. Just in case you happen to see this lawyer elsewhere, you'll know what he's really about. First, it's worth noting that there are known side effects of ECT, uh, not notably memory loss and slight behavioral changes that are usually temporary. Uh, a psychiatrist must, by law, inform his or her patients of these potential side effects. Memory loss sucks. Uh, but if it comes down to forgetting a week of your life or literally killing yourself, most people will choose the former. That's the sort of cost-benefit analysis that everyone has to do when the shit really hits the fan. You're in a bad situation and there's never going to be a magical pill that will perfectly cure you with no side effects. Chemo, for instance, will absolutely ravage your body and mind, uh, but most people would prefer it to dying of cancer. However, there is no real evidence that ECT causes major permanent brain damage. Karen's case did not involve any brain scans that would show direct evidence that his client's brains were damaged. Instead, he focused on circumstantial evidence, like measuring their cognitive development related to their peer group. Can you spot the problem with that? Uh, that's right, people who are literally suicidally depressed for a long period of time 
will also show poor cognitive performance compared to their peers. He also argues that ECT led to an increase in brain-derived neurotrophic factor proteins, uh, which may be true, but also those proteins might be good for us. Uh, Lower amounts of BDNF, as they're known, are correlated with depression. So maybe depressed patients are actually benefiting from their increase. But as a neuroscientist pointed out in the Reddit comments, it's a really complicated issue. And this lawyer, one year out of law school, by the way, working for his daddy's law firm, just throwing that out there, and his handful of experts aren't really up to the task of explaining this properly. And yes, I know anyone can go online and call themselves a neuroscientist, but everything this person said is on the mark, and it is an extremely complicated issue that Karen's experts just aren't very good at parsing. And speaking of his experts, his primary expert is one Moira Dolan, an internist, in other words, not a brain doctor, uh, who seems to make a living testifying about how horrible psychiatry is on behalf of Scientologists. That's right, it all comes back to those delightful, modern medicine-hating cult people. With all of that known, how do you win this case? Well, unfortunately, it's easy. Litigation is expensive, and doctors and uh, others in the medical industry often settle so that they can move on with their lives instead of spending hundreds of thousands of dollars in the hope that a jury of 12 people will understand the nuance of treating severely Uh, sick, desperate people uh, who are literally on the verge of death. Ambulance chasers know this and use it as a way to score easy money. Unfortunately, this leads to fear-mongering and a decrease in the total number of doctors who are going to be willing to take on these high-risk cases. It helps nobody except for the money-grubbing lawyers. On the bright side, thanks to medical Reddit stepping up, uh, that AMA was such a disaster that he was forced to delete it, uh, possibly after being reported to the California bar for unlawful advertising. Ah, the schadenfreude. It's so good. It almost, yeah, it almost kind of helps my depression a little bit.